guys. So today we got a question from old Hognose. That is the name that he gives me. And uh, Hognose is at odds with his coaches on the proper way to train. So he says that he is 5'11", 300 pounds. He's a big fella. He's a veteran, so he served in the military. He wrestled in school, and uh, he did some combatives in the military, and he used to be a steel mill worker. So he's done a lot of hard stuff in his life. And he says that his default set... By the way, guys, I'm just sort of quick tangent. This is a long whole message, and so I'm giving you kind of the abridged version, right? The, the guts of it, the bones of it. And he says that he is... A guy that his default setting is to go hard because the way that he def he sees it is the way that you get better at something is that you suffer, you endure the pain, you go through it, and then you keep going through it until it becomes easy, and then you look for new challenges, right? And so he says that in his gym, he's been going really hard the whole time, and his coaches have kind of told him to chill out a little bit because there will be times where you know they'll start rolling, he'll roll really really hard for like two rounds or three rounds, and then he'll have to take out a round or two and just to gasp for breath because he went so hard. And he says that he's not trying to rip submissions or anything like that, but people kind of imply that he's being a little dangerous. And so he doesn't understand what, what gives because the way that he says it in his message, he says, quote, I want, actually he says this before, my question is, should I expect all BJJ, BJJ gyms to want me to play patty cake every time I roll? Am I just too dumb for the philosophical side of jiu-jitsu? Should I try and find some old wrestling man gyms? I want. No, I need to go hard. I refuse to half-ass something like jiu-jitsu. I want to go hard until I pass out from exhaustion and my whole body is sore. Then I want to come back and do it the next day and again and again and again. And then when it becomes easy, I want to find someone else to kick my ass. I want to get my ass kicked by every every day by all the monsters because in that, in my experience, it's how you get better. And so he goes on this kind of this kind of thing, right? He wants to go hard. And so basically the gist of the question is, I want to go hard. Why do they want me to play patty cake? So brother, thank you for the question. And I already talked to you about this in email, but think about it this way. You were in the military and then you were in wrestling, right? You were in these things. Think about the process that happened there, right? And you lifted well as well. And it follows the same process. When you were in wrestling, did you come in for your very first day after for tryouts and then they were like just threw you into a full like live wrestling match with points and everything else or anything like that? Of course not, right? They probably worked on your conditioning and they started teaching you the different moves and the rules and the positions. Kind of get you up to speed a little bit. With the military, right? Did you step off like the bus when you got to basic training and they hand you a loaded weapon, a full kit, and then send you off to the battlefield? Of course not, right? Like you get, you go through this process of them bringing you online, showing you how they do things and do them as, as safe a way as possible to the people around them and to themselves and as, to be as effective as they can, right? Lifting is no different. You didn't decide one day because you said you deadlift a bit. You don't decide that you're going to deadlift and never experience a deadlift and decide that you're going to go deadlift for the very first time and start throwing the plates on the side and try to do it for a max weight, right? If you do, it's probably a recipe for a disaster on your back. So there's this process where when we do things that are intense, things that suck, that suffer, right? There's a process where we got to get up to speed a little bit first before we can really get down to it if we want to do it for the long term. If you want to be very like short end and, or short term, you can do that, right? Because if you and I roll, you not knowing what you're doing because you're relatively new to jiu-jitsu. If you start coming at me full speed and you say, man, I want you to go as hard as possible on me, I might catch you in a weird submission. You don't know what's going on and then you don't know the right way to react and you wig out of it and all of a sudden you shred your knee because I had you in a hill hook and you didn't tap or didn't do the right thing. Now there's no coming back tomorrow. That whole idea of like go hard every day and then come back tomorrow, that's gone. There's no more of that because you're, you're injured now. Likewise, you could injure someone else because you're 300 pounds. You being reckless on the mat, this is like, this reminds, when people are really reckless on the mat, it reminds me of someone driving their car in through the lanes and they're just like zoom, going as fast as possible and they're in and out of traffic playing like Frogger or something. And, you know, it's, I'm okay with the fact that you want to go zoom, zoom in your car, but I'm not okay with you in the fact, with the fact that you risking my life because you just want to be a race car driver in the middle of you know, deadlock traffic. So with that, this is why like at my gym, for instance, and I'm saying this as a parallel to what's probably going on at your gym. At my gym, we don't allow the brand new people in the gym to like go full speed. The whole idea is to bring them up to speed slowly. So when they come into the gym, they are forced to work the positions and then they work situational rolling from those positions. And after several months of time, then we can 
combine it all together and let them get those full rolls where they can be in a pool of sweat afterwards and being laying there and like questioning why the hell did I sign up for this? But at the same time going, I love this, right? This weird thing that's going on. You know, this this weird love that we have for suffering. And so your coaches are probably doing the same thing. They're not playing patty cake with you. They're trying to say, listen, let's get you up to speed. So one, you don't hurt yourself. And two, you don't hurt anybody else. And this way, we can get you going and get you in shape and, and get you up to speed with all the techniques and everything else. And this way, you can have those super intense, like really rough situations, that, that hard situation that you want, that hard rolls that you want. You can get up to speed with those and do so in a way that you can come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And that's probably what's going on. And so I wouldn't think of it as a patty cake or look at it as a negative thing. And the thing is, is this is a misconception that I had when I was younger. When I was younger, I didn't think that there was a reason to train light. I remember when some of the guys would want to train light, I would, you know, I, I, would, I would basically in my head think, you're weak, bro. Like you got to train light today whatever. As I've gotten older, I've understood the value in training lighter. doesn't mean I like training light all the time. I like going hard. I love those days where I'm exhausted and laying in a pool of sweat, but there's some value. I've had some of my best breakthroughs with my training and technical ability from lighter training sessions where I'm just messing around with stuff. You know, it's more of like an active drilling session where I'm trying stuff out and I'm playing around and being a lot more playful. And then I'm like, oh, I figured something new out. Huh, cool. And then I can take it and use it for later on during my harder training sessions. And it's just like lifting weights. When you lift weights, you don't max out every single day. You get injured and destroyed trying to do so. You, you max out sometimes, you lift really heavy sometimes, and then sometimes you keep it in that 70 to 80 per, percent range. And then sometimes we drop it down and we deload, right? We're down in the 40 to 60 percent range. Sometimes we even take days off, right? So that's the idea, man. There's there's value in training sub-maximally all, all, you know, sometimes, right? There's, there's value in not going hard every single time. And you have to lose this misconception that you're holding which people have held it for a long time, that you got to go hard every single time you train. you got to go so hard that you physically can barely walk out of the, the gym. That is a misconception. That's not what you have to do. It's one way you can do it, but it's not the only thing that you can do to get better at jiu-jitsu. And, you know, especially if you're trying to train for the long haul, there's a shelf life to training like that. And it ain't very long for a guy who's getting older like yourself. So just an idea to chew on. So with that said, man, I would go to the gym and I would try to listen to your coaches. I mean, they're your coaches. They've been doing this stuff for a long time. They probably got some decent idea. Start to learn the, the ins and outs of jiu-jitsu. Then slowly start to add that intensity back in as you become more competent and more understanding of what's going on. This will make sure that one, you keep yourself safe so you can train tomorrow. It'll keep your training partner safe and they'll probably be more okay with it because they're like, okay, he is going hard, but he's not like endangering anyone with crazy stuff. And he's not like doing anything like that. And then understand there is going to be times where you're going to have to train lighter and it's okay to do so. Don't feel guilty about it as if it wasn't worth the, the time in the gym, because sometimes those lighter training sessions, as you'll probably find if you train long enough, are very valuable. So just a couple ideas to chew on old hog nose. Hopefully that's helpful to you and anybody else that has kind of that same idea, that same misconception about training and, um, with that said, guys, I'll talk to you next time.